in the bed wars halloween update part three the devs added the crypts coven game mode by beating this game mode you receive the new elder kit completely for free so that is why in this video i'll give all the tips and tricks on how to beat the new game mode can we get 5934 likes on this video go to and smash that like button and if you're new subscribe it does help it a ton let's go get started first let's go over queuing in order to play the game mode you need to have keys every single hour you receive one key even if you're offline you still receive keys you can only hold four keys at a time when queuing into the game mode that takes up one key here is the quickest way to receive more keys receiving a bedworth party invite if that player queues in the crypts coven instead of using your keys it would use the party leaders to bypass the cooldown use a alt account or your friend's party in this new game mode the max server size is four players and this next tip is the most important queuing in the game mode by myself there will be three random players in the server we have the noobs the trollers and then we have the laggy players these people would ruin your game especially since keys are limited 100 percent have a party of four players if that is an issue for you here's an easy way to find players on the bed wars homepage. go down to the servers list the top two servers always have the sweatiest players and this works 99% of the time so i'm currently in the first lobby there are so many high win players and if that doesn't work for you use a app like discord on my discord server there are so many members looking for players to play with just by joining my server you can easily find one link in the description once you have found your party before you start playing make sure you have some sort of communication using the roblox chat will slow you down either use roblox voice chats you're better off just using discord make sure you keep your roblox audio on the sound does help at a ton the entire event is really similar to last year's trip trials but you first spawn in the graveyard it's not the exact same as last year it's a bit different follow the trail and go all the way forward once you are near the gate hold f it only takes one player to do it when you open the gate the event finally starts there is this platform of different colors here there will be a color combination make sure you take a screenshot of this because you can't go back to it later in the game real quick take a screenshot it's a lot easier there's an effect called curse of the altar in the graveyard your health does not regen be careful taking damage keep in mind you are locked in first person i know it's annoying once you have started the graveyard i would suggest doing this since there are four players in your party when you start the graveyard have three players look for candles all three of them are split up then have one player at the combination area doing the code this will save a lot of time but if you are finding candles it is really easy to spot them they just glow on the bottom left corner of your screen it has your candle count you need to find eight candles i believe the map does have 10 candles you just need eight i believe there are 20 different candle spawns it's not that difficult to find them just go around the entire map and it's that simple every time you play the game mode the candle spawns will always be different and the exact same applies for the code around the entire map there are these skeletons they don't really do much damage to you however with the effect you cannot regain your health back there is one nice thing when killing a skeleton you receive an apple those apples do heal you not by much the skeletons do have a bow and a sword if you keep your distance you should not take any damage be careful with your bow the skeletons aren't really a problem if you want you can fight them it's just not worth it the longer you spend in the graveyard over time more skeletons will spawn be as quick as you can if you're not finding candles you should do the code with the screenshot you just took looking back at your screenshot make sure to follow the color sequence i highly recommend you share this screenshot with your entire party when changing the candles just press f it does go in a sequence change all eight of the candles to correspond to your screenshots be really careful because light blue and dark blue look the exact same once you have finished all the candles go to the statue in the center and hold down pray the guardian will check and see if you're correct 
If a light shines towards the candle, it means it's correct. If a light does not flash at the specific candle, it means that you're incorrect. Whatever candles don't have light on them, those are incorrect. If you are wrong, it does do some damage to all players in the graveyard. At least you don't get instantly killed. If you do forget the color combination, whenever you get the colors wrong, for a few seconds underneath the candle, the game will show you the correct color. Over time in the graveyard in the first section, you take 6 to 10 damage occasionally. Once you have the correct code, there will be a hole in the ground that opens up. It's time for the next stage. Any extra apples in the first stage, you will not have them for the second stage. This next section is called Crypt Escape. It's the exact same as last year. If there are players spectating your game, make sure they leave because it will break this section. Once you're ready, move forward. For this section, go as quickly as you can. The void will start to rise. As you move forward, there are these cyan platforms. Over time, they will start to disappear. Even if you can't see them, they are still there. You can either keep going or wait for them to show. Go quickly because the void is rising. If you fall off the map, you instantly die. This next section is really confusing. There are two bridges, and each bridge has a ghost on them. The one on the left has one ghost. The one on the right has three ghosts. Every ghost equals one player. In order to move on, we need one player on the left side and three players on the right side. By the way, this is different every single time. And if a player does die during the section, the bridge removes a ghost. That's why it's really important to have trustful teammates. And once you move forward, go to the gate and open it up. Next, we have the exact same rocks again. This time, they don't disappear. There are some gray rocks there. If you step on them, they will fall down. Try to avoid them. Last, we have this ball section. Typically, there are two balls that roll down at the exact same time. Once the second ball falls down, make it run to the right side of the map. Hug the right wall and don't stop hugging it. Keep hugging the wall until it's safe. In order to move on, every single player must be in that room unless they have died. One player holds the rope and now it's time for part one of the last section. What do we have here? It's a familiar friend named Crypt from last year's boss. The devs took the exact same boss battle, but it's a bit nerfed. This time, Crypt has half of his HP. When you spawn in, you have a bow and a sword. As of right now, the sword does not really do anything. You only need the bow. No matter how many players are battling the boss, he will still have the same amount of HP. To make the boss fight easier, never stop moving and always keep spamming your bow. Don't hold down your bow for too long, just spam click. The first attack are these red circles. Before he shoots them, on the ground there's a red circle that gives you a heads up. So if you're paying attention, just keep moving and avoid them. They don't do much damage. And for Crypt's second attack, he targets one player at a beam. You can't really avoid this. The beam does quite a bit of damage. I believe the beam only targets a player with the most HP. Don't worry if you're very low. Once Crypt reaches a certain amount of HP, he does a special attack. The first one will bring up many platforms with different symbols on them. On the left side of Crip in the air, there is one symbol. Now you must find the platform with the exact same symbol that he's holding. Once time is up, the ground becomes poisonous and all of the wrong platforms break. Even if you do fall, depending on your HP, if you keep spam jumping, you might survive. And for Crip's second attack, he will rise two platforms similar to earlier. Those platforms have ghosts on them. For every ghost, it equals one player. And this is why it's really important to have communication. You can easily figure out who goes to what platform. Either one platform or both will have ghosts on them. Every player equals one ghost. When you're on the platform, do not jump. If all the ghosts do not light up in time, the ground becomes poisonous and both platforms break. Even if you don't make it in time, depending on your HP, just by spam jumping, you might be fine. On Crypt special platform attacks, as a player, you can't fight Crypt when he has those platforms spawned. Once the attack ends, you can fight him again. Once those platforms do spawn, be really careful because sometimes you might get suffocated if you're underneath it. Throughout the map, these walls will spawn. Touching the wall, you do take damage. It will not instantly kill you. There are gaps in the walls that go through. There are horizontal and vertical walls. As the round carries on, the two exact walls will both intersect each other. If you do get stuck, just go through the wall. It's no big deal. It doesn't do that much damage. As you keep going on, Crip will keep repeating the exact same attacks, but he will get faster every single time. Both boss fights do have player health regen, although it's really slow. Try to kill him as fast as you can. Once Crypt is dead, it is time for the second and final boss. 
The second boss is Eldrick. He is a really tough guy to beat. Once again, having more players makes it a lot easier, especially for one of his attacks. First of all, when the boss starts, get as far back as possible and spread out from your teammates. For his first attack, it's these landmines. Before they are on the ground, he will shoot them out. When it's on the ground, it looks something like this. Try to avoid it because it does 40 damage. What makes this really difficult is that he shoots out so many at a time, it's really easy to get distracted. Once again, always keep moving, just don't stand still. Those landmines target players. The second attack is called Health Steel, really similar to the kit. While you lose HP, he gains it back. By the way, the closer you are to him, the more HP it takes. The farther away you are from him, the less HP it takes. He always targets the player with the most HP. Once again, he does spawn walls. This time, they are a lot more annoying. There are more intersections, and sometimes walls will go on top of each other. Sometimes he spawns an island that has a force field around it with a statue in the middle. This must be the best attack because it gives you time to heal up. Once this island is up, the island has a force field around it plus a statue in the middle. As quick as you can, make it to the island. Once you're on the island, you have plenty of time to heal up. After he spawns the first island, every single player in the match must stay together now. That's because for his next attack, he targets one player. When this happens, there will be a green circle around you, which means Eldrick is about to do 80 damage to you. This could be the end of you. On YouTube, there are so many tutorials on this, no one fully explained this. When the green circle is on you or someone else, every player in that circle it will divide the damage. Let's say it does 80 damage. If there's one player in the circle, you take all 80 damage. If there are two players, you both take 40 damage. If all four players are in the circle, you take only 20 damage each. That's why it's really important to share the damage with everybody. When that circle spawns, get near your friend with it. At the same time, if the circle is on, you just keep moving. The last attack is the skeletons. They are the exact same as before. In the graveyard, you did have armor. This time, you have no armor. Therefore, the skeletons do a lot more damage. Although, killing a skeleton does give you apple... That could be really useful late game. The skeletons aren't really that worth it. Just try to avoid them. What makes this boss so difficult is that there are so many things happening at once. It is so easy to get distracted. When it comes to fighting the boss, keep shooting at him. If you're running low on HP, look at the ground and run away. When Eldrick spawns a platform, you cannot damage him in the period. The longer you're alive for, the quicker he gets. So far, that's all my tips and tricks. Here's my winning game. After 50 different attempts, I finally beat the game mode. These are the prizes. First, we have the Warlock Slayer title. Then we have the Crypt Master, the exact same one from last year. And of course, you receive the Elder Kit completely for free. My favorite prize has to be the badge. I am one of the few Bedwars players that owns every single badge in the game. In 30 hours, only 5.4k players got the badge. This is by far the hardest event in the entire game. Even playing with the best players, we still struggled. There's a really high chance that the devs might nerf the event. The game mode only lasts for one week. You don't have that much time left. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. I will try and answer them. I hate to say it, but this game mode can't be completed as solo. You need people to help you. I might do a few streams helping players out. Drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss those. Even though this was a Crypt Trials repeat, I still find it really fun. To see how the Elder Kit works, watch my update video on my YouTube channel. Anyways guys, that is today's video. Drop a like and subscribe. Best of luck. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.